Hey kids, it's Justin James, and on this Justin James Explains, we're looking at Kalika theaters. So first and foremost, I want to give you an idea of what these animals are like. They are mammals from the Miocene, these two particular models. But in a theater of your mind, imagine a horse, a Therizinosaurus, a gorilla, a panda, and a giant brown sloth had a baby. Like one mutant-s baby. That's what Kalika theaters are, right? So I'll explain to you. So when they were first discovered, when well, the first fossils discovered, they have claws, and they are closely related to horses. It's kind of a spoiler there. But they were first thought to be some kind of giant, either anteater or penguin, because when you find large claws, the first animals you think of in mammal world are anteaters and penguins, well, modern mammal world are, are those two. But as far as classification goes, in the word undulate. Now when you think undulate, you think up and down, like water, you know, like the, like the undulating waves or something. But in the world of mammals, undulate means a hoofed animal. And in modern mammals particularly, there are two major groups of hoofed undulates. The perseridactyls and the arteriodactyls. You're like, what is that? I'll, there's a link below as well. But the perseridactyls are the odd-toed undulates. So animals with three and four toes. So colicotheres fall in that group. Who are they related to? Horses, rhinoceros, tapirs, and the extinct uh, brontotheres. There are other perseridactyl animals but they don't make models of them. So we have these. So the three main ones we see today are tapers, rhinos, and horses. So perseridactyls are really, really an interesting group. When the early Cenozoic, like from, you know, dinosaurs out 66 million years ago, so the Cretaceous period ends, the Paleo, uh, Paleocene epoch begins. At that point, it's like a, kind of like a swamp. The Eocene is, is where we start seeing the whales and, and a lot of many groups start up and bats and things take off, right? So, but from the Eocene to Oligocene, we have a lot of perseridactyls, which is a lot of leaves, you know, browsing environment. The Miocene takes over, and we have the Pliocene, Pleistocene, and of course today the Holocene. We have grass. So they're, they're, I would say competitors, or at least are the arteriodactyls, the even-toed undulates, animals with two or four hooves. Think of a deer hoof or a cow, uh, whereas a horse is walking around on, they, they started with more toes, and they walk around on the middle finger, actually, on the middle finger, middle toe. Uh, rhinos have the three like that, right? The the arteriodactyls, these guys here, actually have two and four. So what are they? For example, your giraffe, camel, wait, llama, pig, bison, like bull, domesticated bull, hippo, elk, wildebeest, deer, and goat. There are many other types, but these are just kind of representative of some of the groups. So what we see in the time scale, say I were dinosaurs, the the Paleocene, the Eocene, the Ligocene, we see the Perseridactyls doing really well. The Miocene starts, and these guys have ancestors in this time too, which are smaller. When the Grassins show up, these guys like explode. They're everywhere. They take over pretty much in numbers. And one of the reasons we think that happened is because these guys have. Uh, they're ruminants. Some, some of them are ruminants. They have like, like the multiple caver gut. So you know how a cow will ch chew the cud? They'll chew their food, swallow it partially, and chew it again a little bit. So that's why way of breaking down grass. Grass is very difficult to work with. Horses are unique or special because they, well not unique, some other animals did it too, but they really made it obvious. Where horses were browsers at first, and then they got bigger and the grass came along, they began eating, they became grazers. Some browsers are grazer eating grass. Which is why horses have really large teeth because your teeth are a hardness of five, and a piece of grass has like a, a silica, and silica is a seven. So your teeth are softer than grass. You shouldn't eat grass, right? So the idea is that we see these animals changing. So colicotheres in this group, they also survive into, because the first ones were you've seen 55 million years ago, they survived into the Miocene, and the North American types died out about 2 million years ago, and the ones in, in the old world uh, died out about a million years ago, a little less than that actually. So they did pretty well. They kind of passed all, the, all those all those barriers. Now, let's go over the animals themselves up close. I know we've covered classification. Also, that's why I put links in my, uh, below because on the web, my website I have a all of these guys, pictures of them up and classified. So if you want to know more about that, there's your source. So, in a toy friendly way. So, the two we have here, the two models we have here are Colicotherium and Morops. So the Colicothere family has two branches, and these are representative of each of the two branches. So Colicothere is, it means uh, again, pebble tooth because their teeth, the way they look when they're worn, 
but the Colicotherium is a part of the subfamily Colicotherinae. So these are the ones, again, with the longer arms, shorter legs, and these clawed hands that are going inward like this. So I, that's why I will use the, the, um, the gorilla analogy that are walking kind of on their knuckles. And the idea is that their arms are longer so they can rear up on their, on their hind legs and eat from tall trees. In fact, both groups like to eat higher leaves off the ground. Meanwhile, the other group, so we have Colicotheria, Colicotheria, there's Schizotheria. These guys do not have, they're not walking on their knuckles. Their claws go forward because they're usually bigger and they have longer necks. So the idea is that if there were a tree right here, this guy can rear up and kind of grab the leaves and pull them down like maybe, I don't know, a panda. And then this guy here can walk up and just kind of grab the leaves that way too, this longer neck. So we're seeing that there's two different styles of this, the, the same goal of getting higher leaves in the tree, but there's two different ways of doing it. And so Marups here does one way, there here does another way. And so what's really fun with, with, with this group, the Schizotherium, is that there's one of them called Tylocephalotherium that looks just like this, but has a dome on his head like a Pachycephalosaurus, like a dome. And that's, I, I want that toy. It doesn't exist. I looked earlier before this video. It doesn't exist. That's very upset. That's a tragedy to humanity. But that thing exists, and we don't have a toy of it. We, we barely got these guys, actually, right? So what's the big deal with Cook at the Ears? One, um, their key to success in a time where there's more grasslands is that many of the other parasodactyls, rhinos, horses, their relatives, they're all grazing pretty low. They're eating low. And these guys graze high. So even though there's more grassland, there's still trees and stuff. There's still branches and bushes. But the idea is that um, they, they still have that kind of the different role. Now, my first experience with these guys as a kid was in walking your prehistoric beasts. You know, I've heard of walking with dinosaurs. There's a, that. There's walk, and there's walking with... Um, the four dinosaur series of Gorgons and Metrodon. It's prehistoric beef as well, which is after dinosaurs, Cenozoic. So I first saw them there. Um, and that's why I think the, the term clawed horses was first brought to my, my mind as a child. But again, with these two models, this one is Click of so Bully Land, I mentioned that earlier. So this one, again, I can't tell you how good or, I mean, it's uh, how good or bad the model is because it's the only one I can't compare it to others. But it hits all the points. Uh, as far as integument, skin and hair, we don't know, but horses, rhinos, tapers, I mean, all, almost all cetaceans, I'm sorry, all mammals except for cetaceans have like fur and hair. So that, that would be questionable. The ears, you look at a horse, taper, rhino ear, they all have similar ear design, so like they're not going off wrong there. If, and bear in mind when I um, draw skeleton, draw, draw animals, I look at the skeleton first and I draw it. Uh, whether it should be very beefy or not depends on the animal. I mean, you know, sometimes you have a skeleton in the animal and there's like a lot of meat around it. That we don't know, but given this overall, this is a perfect example of this, of this genus. The, the Morris here, again, same, it's given a little look like a horse-like mane, and the idea is that we don't know if that's true, but we can't say it's not, not true. So uh, recent tests are looking at, well, we know they're clearly to Perseridactyl, but who in that group are they closer to? And it seems to be somewhere between horses and tapirs, not so much rhinos. So, I mean... So even then, that kind of helps us determine this uh, look of the animal. But again, they all, both have three toes. This is the Collect A Morphus uh, 2015. If you, and the idea with this one in particular is, it's, I mean, I like them both. They're different species, but I like this one like more. So that the idea that this is a newer model, it's a different style. But again, if you want to get both, it makes sense to get different, two different branches of the animals. But with this particular Morphus, it's like I said, Collect Day is a company I like a lot because they do make more unusual species. A lot of times, Safari, Papo, Shali, they all make Triceratops, T. rex, Stegosaurus, Velociraptor over and over again. Because I understand at the end of the day, the market is for children, and children like those well known species. But I, as a weird adult <laughs> collector, science teacher guy, like unusual species. And this is, and so I, actually, I found this model years ago. I, would, I go to eBay sometimes and just type in Collect A and just scroll down and see what's there, basically. And I'll find unusual species here and there. And when I saw this one, I, I literally was like, yes, this is, you know, I'm excited about that. So anyway, so again, I, I endorse both models, uh, both species, uh, if, if you want to have the comparison. But again, if you were to pick, like, if you only get one, I get this one. Uh, and of course, Bully Land is, I think, an older set, too. So that's also a factor if you're, if you're searching online. That being said, uh, that is that is the Collected Theaters in a nutshell. They're a usual group that are underappreciated and underrepresented in the toy world. And I think we should do something about that. So uh, we should demand 
the companies make more of these and their relatives. That being said, I'll see you guys later, and thank you for tuning in.